so hi everyone. Uh, so we are very um, excited to have uh, Samian uh, uh, as our first speaker in the topological quantum matter seminar. And today he will talk about the geometric test for topological phases of quantum matter. Uh, Samuel, yeah, please take your time. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Jeff and uh, the organizers for the invitation to speak here. It's a great pleasure. So I would like to talk about um, recent work. Uh, well, not very recent, but last couple to three years with uh, Dimitri Zvonkin, who is a uh, algebraic geometer in Paris, uh, CNRS. And uh, the topic is, uh, um, we have a geometric test for topological phases of matter, which I'd like to explain you how it works. And uh, that's, that's a subject, it's a seminar, is topo quantum topological matter, that's exactly about that. Uh, now, uh, so let me start from the some uh, basic uh, and ideas which uh, people in condensed matter know very well. So the Berry phase is uh, was introduced by Berry in the early ages, and he considered the case where there is quantum system on the lowest energy level with the uh, gap spectrum. And the system depends mostly on some parameter space. Uh, and uh, in this case, he figured out that uh, actually the quantum system defines a line bundle with this parameter space as, as you transport on the picture, as you transport your wave function from some in state, it undergoes uh, deformation and then it comes back to some uh, to the same Hilbert space but it's possible that it, that it can uh, uh, acquire some phase factor some zero phase factor and that under this uh, adiabatic process so if the system stays always in the lowest in energy eigenspace so that's why we need the gap this can happen and this uh, phase factor is known as holonomy of the Hermitian connection of the line bundle. This was uh, pointed out immediately by Simon, even before the work of Berry was published. So this connection, in this case, it, this connection is called Berry connection. And also not uh, long after the, the work of Berry, Vilcek and Z, I think in 84 already, pointed out that if the energy level, the ground state energy level is degenerate, then actually the adiabatic transport on the model space can lead to non-abelian connection. So we start starts from some C in wave function, which is some in some R dimen in uh, R dimensional uh, degenerate complex space. And then we transport it. Now the fibers are complex spaces of dimension R, where R is degeneracy. And when it, we come back, we can get our initial state. If we compare it to the uh, final state, it differs by some unitary R by R matrix. Right? And this, uh, this idea is pretty interesting. First of all, and second of all, it actually received the kind of second uh, uh, life, so to say, in uh, in the topological quantum matter. So this was pointed out by Kitaev that if we would like to make topological, if we would like to make quantum computer, there is a uh, interesting idea that if uh, we work with a state of matter which is topological and the word topological is to be defined in this talk in which sense so um, because this is a huge field and uh, uh, what i'm gonna describe as a particular kind of point of view so he pointed out that uh, this non-abelian berry phase can be used to do this topological quantum computing so 
if we have here on the picture, we have many, many electrons here in the correlated states. And then we maybe achieve to create some quasi particles here and braid them like this picture suggests that we braid through these operations, elementary operations, uh, exchange these uh, quasi particles along some paths. Maybe you use a laser, maybe you use some needle to do that. And the state uh, remains uh, degenerate uh, and gapped all the time. Then uh, this would be uh, you know, used as a topological protection for the quantum computation. So in this uh, very well-known review, it was kind of attempted to define the system in topological phase. So if the system is in topological phase, if at low temperatures, and low energies and long wavelengths, all observable properties, correlation functions, are invariant under smooth deformations, diffeomorphisms or the space time manifold in which the system lives. So, this is a, a bit of a physics definition, which we'd like to make a bit more precise. And what, what, what do we actually see here in, in sort of some abstract sense? What's happening is that in this setting, we have a parameter space, which will be denoted in this case, in this talk by capital M. And then we have a, a rank R complex vector bundle of finite dimensional Hilbert spaces of quantum states. For each point of the parameter space, I have R wave functions. So in the previous example of this topological quantum computing, M was, for example, the configuration space of these quasi-particles, which we're, we're going to break. But in general, it can be any parameter space. So in, in, in condensed matter, obviously, brilliant zone is often considered as parameter space. But they can be all sorts of other parameter spaces you could consider. Uh, and uh, what, what do we want from this kind of abstract setting uh, to obtain this topological property when this system is topological in this, kind of, in this sense? So topo topology is concerned with proper, geometric pro properties which are preserved under continuous deformations. So famously, a cap is the same thing as a donut for topologist, at least if, if a cap is made out of bread. Uh, so, and here's an attempt to uh, at the definition. So, we would like uh, to call uh, those systems topological for, for which adiabatic transport along a path in parameter space, any path in parameter space, is independent under continuous deformations of this path. So, for example, if we're going to braid two particles in our quantum computer, it should not matter if the path along which we braid it is kind of wig is a bit wiggly. Right? It should be only important that it's uh, can, it gives the same result, so to say, if we slightly deform the path without kind of topologically breaking it. Right? That sort of idea. So this uh, this has a, a concrete. Uh, this leads to concrete condition on the, this bundle, this vector bundle of uh, Hilbert spaces. It means that this bundle should be flat. So locally, it should look like a product of parameter space and our dimensional complex space. And transition ca constants between sort of the local charts should be given by constant matrices. So you glue together this bundle uh, with constant transition functions, then this bundle will be flat. So a bit more precisely, so for, the, for a complex vector bundle, the following oops, um, is equivalent. Vector bundle is flat. 
it admits a flat connection, the connection which uh, acts on sections of this bundle, gives one forms with values in sections. And curvature of this connection is zero. So they should be, should be able to find such connection. Or uh, this vector bundle is defined by representation from P1 to JLR. So fundamental group, first fundamental group is the set of four loops, modular continuous deformations between them. So in the picture here, so schematically I have my parameter space. It can be complicated space. There may be some holes, some topology, this parameter space. And I have loops. So for example, here I have blue and green loop. Obviously these two loops can be deformed into each other but I cannot deform blue loop into red loop. So for blue and green loop, I should get the same result if I transport my quantum system adiabatically along these loops. So this is my quantum vector space of my wave functions, which I transform here adiabatically. But uh, red loop will give you different results. And to precise a little bit more, since we are in quantum mechanics, we will allow to, for the adiabatic transport to be independent of continuous deformations only up to an overall phase factor. So overall U1 and the factor, I still allow. And in this case, it's not flat, it's called projecting the flat bundle. So for projecting the flat bundle, the same thing holds, except that, uh, there should be a connection whose curvature is a scalar matrix, Me means, meaning that it's a one, one form or a two form on parameter space times identity matrix, R by R identity matrix. You should be able to find such a connection. Uh, so we will look for projective flat bundles and quantum states which are practically flat. Oh, hey, Samuel, uh, sorry to interrupt, Rob. I think I should uh, ask earlier. So during your talk, uh, are you encouraged to ask questions, uh, interrupt you, or you yes. like to collect uh, the question in the end? No, no, no you can ask uh, questions. Okay, great, great. So let me ask um, like very basic question about your setting. So are you assuming your space time dimension is two plus one, or it works for no, any event? Actually, no, yeah. no, I'm not assuming. Uh -huh. So actually, I will talk about one example, which will be quantum four states, mm -hmm. and that is two plus one dimensional yeah. system. But so far, uh, I only need. Uh, so what do I need? I only need a, a complex vector bundle. I have because I have quantum okay. mechanics. I need parameter space which supports chain classes. So at least. Two, uh -huh. but actually at least four dimensional parameters. A bit later, uh -huh. I will explain. So and I will need the the ground states to be degenerate. Okay. For so this to, uh, to make any sense, because if it's not degenerate, then this is this is just one. So you are you are you are not restricting your discussion to uh, two plus one dimension, but works no. uh, very generally for a no. high dimension. But you uh, require uh, the compact structure. Uh, you are working with complex manifold. Although yeah, I will require complex manifolds. Yeah, I will require actually mm -hmm. M to be complex also. Yeah, in general, topological space doesn't require uh, the compact structure, but you are assume mm -hmm. that. Okay. I, I will, yeah, for this yeah. because right. you will see in the next slide that you you will need that, which actually often happens, but not always. Uh, now, so we can pick a connection on the run car complex vector bundle, uh, computed curvature, and then trace because it's a matrix valued now. So it's a one one form, which is matrix valued. Uh, and if we calculate trace of the curvature, we will actually get two form on M. And this defines homology class called first chain class. Uh, now the traces of now we can take this curvature, it's a matrix. We can take its power and we get power of the matrix and differential 2M form. If we take trace of, uh, of the power, we get 2M form. Uh, and the following is a theorem 
if uh, uh, vector bundle E is perfectly flat, then in cohomology, meaning up to total derivative, these objects which are called chain character M chain characters, the trace of curvature to the power M, they actually simplify. They are equal to first chain character, which is the same thing as first chain class here, times uh, power M. So this is two form, uh, power M will be two M form and divided by some uh, coefficient and factorial rank to the power M minus one. Mm -hmm. So if it's, if, if process is flat, then this will hold. So uh, that's why if we know how to compute the uh, chain characters, we can simply check for our quantum system Compute chain character and check if it's true. So if it's not true, then the system is not topological in this sense. If it's true, it still uh, it still doesn't tell you that it's perfectly flat because you still have to find the connection. But at least this is a test, right? That's what we call it the test. So to spell it out. Yeah, so the topological yeah. requires this relation to be true for yeah. any m for any m right. now m goes from how many it depends on dimension of mm -hmm. parameter space so if parameter space has complex dimension to n then m goes up to n and so, this, so if there there is a m uh, that this relation is not true you will call it not topological right yes if it's not true, then it's not the power. Exactly. That's that will be idea. Now, so to spell it out one, one more time, so we can see the in a degenerate quantum mechanical system with parameter space M in complex manifold. I need a dimension at least complex dimension at least two to have more than first in class, because if this is just, just first in class, there is nothing to check. First in class is first power of itself. Uh, uh, and complex dimension, so this should be complex dimension, at least two, right? Uh, as I said. Now, uh, choose a connection that defines parallel transport, compute its curvature, very curvature, non abelian very curvature, compute powers, get uh, two n forms, two m, n here runs from one to complex dimension, like this. Uh, we obtain matrix value to n form, takes a trace, we obtain uh, to n form, and then we check this relation up to total derivative. And that's, that's what the candidates for topological states of matter will pass this test. Uh, all right, so uh, now let's implement this. And uh, we actually have a kind of non-trivial but calculable situation where this test can be implemented. And this is in for quantum whole states, more preci precisely for fractional quantum whole states. So uh, obviously in condensed matter seminar, everyone saw these pictures more times, several times a day, you probably see these pictures, right? So this is the uh, uh, quantum hole effect discovered by von Klitzek uh, at lower temperatures and high perpendicular magnetic fields. We have this sample uh, gallium arsenide semiconductor. And uh, he measured the whole conductance. Uh, so von Klitzek discovered that whole uh, conductance is quantized where p divided by q is an integer. Uh, but later on, uh, it was found uh, by others that if you have high magnetic, high and high magnetic field, then whole conductance is given by fractions, p over q, where p over q are integers. So for example, the fraction one third is over here it corresponds to whole resistance equal to three. So whole conductance equal to one third. 
t is equal to one, q is equal to three. And uh, the, uh, so just to, uh, to check with you the notations which I use, you, you probably know this uh, uh, very well that in the fractional case, when full conductance is a fraction, not an integral, the Hamiltonian uh, for electrons which live in the sample is interacting Hamiltonian. So it has a kinetic term for each electron is uh, electromagnetic connection with a magnetic field here B. Uh, a D dagger is adjoint of this D. Here, there may be some impurities potential because it's a pure sample. And the interaction, well, it's Coulomb interaction between electrons, but it's actually something that's very, very short range. And uh, the uh, you can immediately, we know immediately from, from Laos Landau levels that the kinetic term of this kind vanishes for uh, wave functions which are holomorphic in complex coordinates times some times this uh, non, uh, Gaussian factor. And to minimize the interaction term, uh, so Laughlin suggested to look for uh, the holomorphic polynomials. So now uh, the uh, good Hilbert space on the fractional plateaus of quantum pole effect, effect are labeled by number of electrons. D, which is in physics D, uh, what I denote D is, is uh, in physics denoted N phi magnetic flux. And Q is this fraction, which is for, for, for Laughlin, it's one over Q. So uh, he said that we should look for symmetric or anti-symmetric polynomials of degree N, of degree D in N letters N. This polynomial should vanish. Uh, so for Laughlin state per se, to, they should vanish to order Q when two particles meet. So polynomial uh, should be in the ideal of this form, Zn minus Zn to power Q. And for other non laughlin states for other plateau states, they could be more general interaction ideals. For example, this one is when three particles meet the, the polynomial vanish, et cetera, et cetera. And another thing which this, this form of the function can admit is a quasi hole. So when this polynomial, it can have prescribed Q, capital Q prescribed zeros. These are kind of defects which can be pinned to defect uh, potential. So uh, you just declare that in general wave function is of this form where this is still symmetric. And this is also a symmetric polynomial and omega i are fixed points where there is no electron on the, on the, in the sample. And uh, this uh, product, Zn minus Zn to the power of Q, uh, realizes this vanishing property uh, on the diagram. Uh, now, uh, the parameter space which I will test my uh, geometric test, I will implement my geometric test, will be the space of aronoff bohm or solenoid phases. So how does this space arise? Uh, this is from Laughlin's Gedankin experiment. So he suggested to wrap this sample into a cylinder. And what you can do then is you can thread a magnetic field through the hole. This phi is a magnetic field, which is called the Aronov Bomb solenoid phase. So insert this solenoid, uh, insert this magnet, you have solenoid here of uh, consistent of Landau orbitals. And then uh, this phi, you can increase magnetic field. This phi varies from zero to two pi effectively. And the parameter space is a circle. Phi takes values in the circle. So this is kind of uh, a surface, Riemann surface that you have. 
that Laughlin suggested to do. So when phi changes from zero to two pi, uh, by a combination of Faraday law and Lorentz force, you can see that one electron kind of shifts from the right to the left and drops from the edge, and another electron appears from the right, and whole conductance equal one. In this case, there is very connection. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you mentioned that the the dimension of the space of the parameter should be larger than one. You right. Just like one. one even so even, one. even ah. complex dimension larger than one. So here we are. We really lack enough dimensions here because we can have connection, but there is no curvature. So curvature should be two form. There is no, no space to put two form. It's one dimension. It only supports connection. So this. This does not is not sufficient. So let's move over. So Haldane Rizai and others suggested to put Laughlin states on a torus. Now torus is good. Why? Because now the uh, parameter space has two parameters. Because I have I can have this solenoid phase through that one hole of the torus and through another hole. I have two. Phi one and phi two both takes values in a circle. So parameter space is a torus, two dimensional, real, but two dimensional. At least it's going to support better curvature. And they figured out that there are few degenerate Laughlin states. They all can be uh, explicitly constructed as polynomial Laughlin state on, on, of Laughlin. This can be constructed with the, using theta functions on the torus. So this is this theta function vanishes when two points meet to the power q, uh, and this is kind of compensation factor, which is where this uh, phi is hidden. So phi is a complex kind of combination phi one plus i phi two. I didn't write it down. The phi is a complex number which denotes this point on this uh, torus of flex. This is where it, it is hidden. It's not here not in this product, only here. And this is kind of sum over the points on the torus. It's like a center mass, center of mass. Of the point. So phi and center of mass come together. And you can actually uh, indeed check that the Berry curvature given by this formula, tender formula. Uh, this is sort of L2 structure, L2 uh, norm on this uh, scalar product on this state. That it's indeed an uh, identity matrix times one one form, which is in this case two form d phi one with d phi two on this on this torus. Whole conductance will be trace of this guy divided by rank, and it, it's going to be one over q d phi one over d phi two. And uh, the Okay, efficient to this one over Q is the is, is the whole conductance one over Q of the fraction. Unfortunately, there is no high chain classes, so it's still not enough to implement geometric test. There is very curvature, there is connection, it's a projected flat, but no high chain classes. By the way, there is no proof that there are Q degenerate Laughlin states. There is no proof. We know that there are Q degenerate Laughlin states, but uh, the proof will, will actually appear a bit a bit later. So we have to go to surface hygienes. This is due to uh, so first ones I think when I knew to consider this. Then Avron Zeiler Zograf inserted sort of these phases, this Aron of Boom phases into this Riemann surface. So parameter space now we will have two G where G is genus number of holes. So here you have six dimensional parameter space, six because, because you can have six solenoid phases passing through the holes. And now uh, the Laughlin states will also be degenerate and they will be vector bundle over this parameter space, which is two G dimensional torus, G dimensional complex torus. It's also another word for this torus, Jacobian of Riemann surface. Uh, so we have two uh, great conjectures, formulas, in this case, due to when Z and when new. 
So when Z formula tells us that if we have Laughlin state and we want to have maximal number of electrons in that state, what will be uh, as a function of the genus fraction, filling fraction, and D, remember D is in phi, magnetic flux. What will be the maximal number of particles? Well, it's one over Q times D plus one minus G. Of course, here D should be divisible by Q because this, this is integer. This should be divisible by, by Q. Otherwise, there will be a bit of empty space every time if it's not divisible. If D, D divisible by Q, this is integer. And then you cannot add one more electron if you have this many because it will be repelled. There's not enough space. Going. And in this completely filled uh, state, so I call this quantum optimal pattern, but I have a cool name for this problem. Uh, what's the, uh, how many states there are for the maximal number of particles? So there are Q to the power genus Laughlin states called topological degeneracy. And this is when new, uh, I call it the new conjecture because there's no proof in the literature and we, we, we proved it. So now I have to say what is a Laughlin state on the Riemann surface and uh, the definition uh, sort of mimics the one which I gave before for the uh, Laughlin states on a complex plane. Instead that, instead of talking about holomorphic polynomials of degree D, I have to talk about line bundles of degree D. So it's kind of analog language for if we work on a torus on the Riemann surface. An analog object as a holomorphic polynomial. So uh, if L is a holomorphic line bundle of degree D, technical condition it should be greater than 2G minus one, greater or equal to two times genus minus one. If number of particles is greater or equal to genus, also technical condition. And Q is our uh, Q from the filial fraction, one over Q, positive integer. We consider n copies of uh, Cartesian product of Riemann surface with itself n times because we have n electrons. Z1, Z2, etc., Z n are n complex coordinates. Uh, P1 and Pn will be projections from this uh, Cartesian product to each sigma, each copy of Riemann surface. And we consider then line bundle it will be over sigma n. And the idea is that for each particle, if we forget about all others, this particle is a section of holomorphic line bundle L. And this is true for the first one, for the second, et cetera, for the nth particle in this product. So this decodes quite simply this. So it's each uh, coordinate Z enters as a degree D polynomial, if you want into this. Uh, uh, into this wave function. So Laughlin state uh, of weight Q, uh, filling fraction one over Q is a section C of this line bundle, but not a, any section, but section which is completely symmetric or anti-symmetric because it won't fermions or bosons. And it vanishes to the order Q on all the diagonals. So this condition is the same as on the plane because it's local. Right? Uh, now, this uh, vector space of uh, Laughlin states, it's labeled by, so once again, n number of electrons. D is n phi is magnetic field flux, which is integer in compact surface. Q is uh, one over Q is field fraction. G is genus. And it's, it depends on the choice of line weight. So the, the parameter space will be uh, the model space of degree D line bundles. And it's actually this G dimensional torus of our own of bomb phases. So it's actually nothing but the space of our own of bomb solenoid phases. Uh, say it a little bit uh, mathematically. It's also called Picard variety, but uh, uh, Jacobian of Riemann surface or space of uh, our own of bomb phases. So this uh, space admits these coordinates, which are exactly this phi A, 
flexes of this magnetic field through the holes. Each of these flexes varies from zero to two pi, uh, to G of them. And this way we will have a vector bundle of quantum Laughlin, uh, quantum states, Laughlin states over these parameters. This is two-g two dimensional torus of flexes. Now we have parameter space. If g is greater than one, this is the parameter space of dimension at least four, right? four, six, etc. So complex uh, space of higher dimension where which will support high chain flexes, and we can test implement our test. Yeah, uh, one question. Mm -hmm. uh, so the Picard variety depends only on b. Uh, and the sigma, so it doesn't depend on Q, G, and other parameters? Uh, no, it does not depend on N, Q, it depends on genus, because yeah, sigma no. is a genus. Sigma is genus, so it's- so the, It depends on genus, yeah. but essentially it's a two G dimensional torus, quite simply. Of, of, of this Aron of bomb solenoid phase. So it doesn't know the particle number and the inverse. No, phase. it does not. No, M does not know particle. It's fixed. Yeah. Okay. Particle number is not does not influence M. M it has fixed for us fixed, fixed dimension. So uh, again, the Laughlin states can be computed, con constructed, to the constructively. Right? Now we have to use uh, Riemann theta functions, which are functions on the Jacobian of the Riemann surface. And again, this Aron of bomb, bomb, uh, bomb phases, solenoid phases enter into this uh, theta function, which is kind of overall thing, uh, multiplied by the product, which knows about particles uh, on the diagonal, right? Like on the torus, it enters here in this theta function. I will not define this that uh, this uh, functions, this theta functions. So I will refer to this in the paper because actually we will not gonna need this form. And the reason is that for genus greater than one, Berry curvature, which Berry connection is kind of hard to compute uh, from the explicit kind of form of the wave functions. On the torus, it's possible, but on higher genus, it's kind of, at least I haven't figured this out. Right? I'm not gonna say it's impossible, but the reason it's hard is because center of mass does not decouple from the, uh, uh, does not decouple from the Aron of bone phases, uh, does not decouple from the this factor, right? So uh, it's, um, on the torus, uh, you, you could you, can, you could decouple integration over center of mass and kind of the rest. And phi enters with center of mass. But here it's actually not center of mass, it's actually image of the center of mass, sort of in, in, in the, under the uh, Abel Jacobi map. In any case, the point is that to compute this is hard. So this is, this is a hard integral. So this is uh, L2, L2 norm is genuine n-fold integral over n copies of Riemann surface. It does not simplify in any naive way. Maybe someone can figure it out, not me at the moment. And uh, it's not obvious how to see that this matrix curve, this curvature matrix is a, a scalar matrix from this form using this wave function. So that's why we kind of, uh, found another approach which does the job without computing the n-fold intervals. Right? It's called the Hirzelbrook growth in decree Monroe formulas. And let me just say our results. So uh, I have um, so notation. So D is a magnetic flux, degree line bundle, and phi minus Q times uh, number of particles plus genus minus one. And I call this P. So if P is equal to zero, this is optimally filled state. There are no more electrons you can add. If P is greater than zero, that means that you have 
the state is not completely filled. That there are empty space a bit in between electrons, so to say. Uh, but it doesn't mean that quasi holes are localized. You can use a, this empty space to create quasi holes. Don't have, so we don't assume that. This a, we call it non localized quasi holes, but there is no, in any case, there is no quasi holes. So the rank, that means the generic of Lacan states, dimension with Hilbert spaces, given by this sum. So here, this, this is simply binomial coefficient. This is binomial coefficient, product of two binomial coefficient, and it's a polynomial in Q, inverse filling factor of degree genus. In particular, uh, if uh, P is less, is, is negative, so you have negative empty space, no empty space, and you have more electrons than possible. This formula tells you that uh, the uh, rank is zero. Uh, so the num maximum number of particles that you can uh, put uh, into a Laughlin state. So it's uh, D divided by Q, D is not integer. So you take um, integer part of this fraction plus one minus G. And this is the Van Z formula. This is a con consequence. If uh, now Q divides D, then the dimension of uh, these Hilbert uh, spaces, this corresponds to maximum number of particles, is exactly Q to the power genus. But in general, it's not. In general, it's not. In general, it's this. But if Q divides D and number of particles maximum, then it's when you conjecture. And what's remarkable is that the formula now in the completely filled state, uh, the generacy is independent of number of particles and of flux of magnetic field. It's topological. Now this, is, uh, this would concern the rank. And now this churn characters. Right? So similar formula. So churn character is sum of forms from zero to maximal degree maximal degree in this case will be 2g so it has this uh, form it's a sum of uh, g minus m minus one terms right so this th this is remember this is trace of mth power of the beric uh, curvature so this uh, has this form and theta is one one form which is called theta class also and it's simply Constructed with the uh, with this parameter magnetic flux parameter d phi a which d phi a plus g d phi a goes with d phi a plus g which is in dual cycle. Uh, so in particular, if we set completely filled state again p is equal to zero, then all this uh, simplifies in such a way that first chain class is q to the power g minus one times theta. It's two form and M's uh, uh, churn uh, character does indeed satisfy this relation, this geometric test. Remember, the geometric test is that M's uh, churn character should be the power of the first churn character, power M for the first churn character. And it works. So it does not work for P not equal to zero in the non complete state. Field state does not work, but for the completely field state, which we do expect that it's topological, it 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 passes the test. Uh, and in this case, the rank, as I said, is q to the power of j. So Laughlin state completely field does indeed uh, has this uh, have this property. Now you can ask, what about localized quasi holes? Actually, same thing uh, goes through if we have a p greater than zero. And with the extra condition that we have some fixed zeros of our polynomial where the quasi holes are located. I use here uh, P, it should be capital Q. It, it, it's not related to this number P, just any number of quasi holes, not insanely big probably, but uh, a finite number of quasi holes we can put anywhere. And it again works 
the completely filled state uh, is queued into a degenerate and geometric test works. So to sum summarize, uh, so we have three situations. Laughlin state can be completely filled when there is no there is no place to add one more electron. Then geometric test works, and the churn character is the power and the power of the first one. If it's partly filled, if I remove some electrons and there is like empty space in between them, it does not work. So what does it mean that the test does not work? It means that this, for example, second chain class is independent from the first one. We actually acquire genuine independent second chain class, uh, which is not the power of the second power of the first one. Question. Uh, sure. uh, so do, does it work this way for a finite number of quasi holes or, or for a finite density too? Uh, it works for the finite number of quasi holes as well. So if you have, if on top of that you fix localized quasi holes mm -hmm. somewhere, and you also have a bit of empty space in between, it still works. In the sense that, in, in the sense that it does not work, that it does not pass the test. But if we have localized quasi holes and no empty space, just localized quasi holes, the test works again. So it work, it does not work, it fails if there is empty space, meaning that the state is not topological, I think. And and it does not depend whether you know it's a it's a finite number of localized quasi holes or in the n equal to infinity limit, there's finite density of quasi holes. So that that, 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 that is also fine. Uh so um that's a good that's a good question. If the number of quasi holes starts to become too big. I'm not sure on this spot what happens. We, we look, we sort of assume that the number of quasi holes is just fine, it's like five. But there's probably a bound on how many quasi, fixed quasi holes you can have that I have to think about. Okay, I don't have the. So there, there are so all sorts of bounds uh, for the statements. So, uh, for example, I mentioned that number of particles should be greater than genus. There's maybe a certain bound also in terms of degree in which in was degree and number of uh, quasi holes because if you have too many quasi holes degree grows too much probably there's a bound on that yeah, yeah so sorry i have also have one question uh i thought the quasi hole is essentially the empty space so mm -hmm. what is the difference between quasi hole and empty space so, uh, super. So quasi hole is not empty space. Quasi hole is localized empty space. Quasi hole is when wave function vanishes at a point. Yeah. And empty space means that there are some zeros, maybe somewhere, but they're not fixed. So, so any uh, polynomial of degree d will have some zeros. So empty space is a movable quasi hole. It's a delocalized quasi hole. Yeah, it's a, I will call it delocalized quasi hole. It's it's. So you are saying the really the difference between the second and the third is that the, in the third you have a pinning potential. You pin the quasi hole. Yes. And in yes. the second you don't have pinning potential. Exactly. But yes. This pinning potential will change the topology. So for me, uh, pinning potential is is simply means that I have a place where to localize quasi hole. So that the Hamiltonian can uh, yeah, but uh, the pinny potential is just um, uh, delta h uh, perturbation term in Hamiltonian. Why this can change topology? Yeah, well, I mean, it uh, uh, uh -huh. the the state the states which are which are uh, which have these things localized and non-localized, they indeed have different topology in the sense. They have different- In this, in this sense. Uh -huh. to, to begin with, there are ma many more states here than here, because here the number of states already starts to depend on n and n phi. Uh, these uh, Hilbert spaces are of a very high dimension. And these are of low dimension, q to the power genus. So for the Hamiltonian with and without pinning potential, are they, um, the ground state have the same Hawk conductivity or not? 
the ground states will have, so the ground states uh, for uh, uh for uh, how to say uh so if you have uh, if you have uh so uh, the uh, uh, hilbert spaces are labeled by number of particles magnetic flux genus and q so if n number of particles is too low the uh the generic of ground states will be high So the generic of ground states in my case depends on these four numbers, number of particles, magnetic flux, genus and inverse field interaction. If, if, if there's not enough electrons, then the there's a lot of freedom here. I can move electrons a bit. Yeah, so let's fix the particle number and all the parameters and only tuning, uh, only, only tuning the pinning, pinning potential. So in one case, a quasi hole is mobile, can proliferate. In another case, quasi hole cannot proliferate. It's a pin yeah. in a third yeah. case. So um, you are saying that they have different topology. They, uh, they will have different degeneracies and different chain classes. Yes. And how can well, how connectivity is the same or different? Different. I, I will talk about this exactly about this point in uh, three slides in uh, my last slide. It, it, I will I will come exactly to your point. This is this is important. Just uh, to quickly mention the idea of derivation. So as I said, we use we don't use n-fold theory type integrals to compute this uh, um, curvature and uh, uh, higher chain classes. We use the uh, hirzebruch riemann and grothendieck riemann formulas. So the idea is that. Uh, Laughlin state is a section of this uh, line bundle over n copies of Riemann surface by definition. And the idea is that to divide, to forget about the diagonal, to divide this uh, by uh, the uh, divisor of diagonals. Right? Then, uh, so we forget about the factor Zn minus Zm to the power Q. Then the rest is a sim really symmetric, completely symmetric polynomial because this part was anti-symmetric. And this completely symmetric polynomial now can be understood as a, a section of a line bundle over symmetric power of Riemann surface. And symmetric power of Riemann surface has an interesting uh, equivalent representation. So the you know, the bosons on the Riemann surface, they actually live in higher dimensional space, which has this weird representation. It's actually uh, projective spaces of dimension n minus g fibered over Jacobian. It's a smooth manifold and it can be represented this way. That's quite interesting that, uh, you know, the. The, that's the space where n electrons on the Riemann surface live, if you want. That's interesting, right? Now, uh, the first chain class of this bundle with the diagonals removed can be computed. So it has two, uh, uh, it's a sum of two, uh, two forms. First one is this theta class, which we saw already. It, now it's, it lives on this Jacobian, uh, which comes from this representation of symmetric product. So it's a different Jacobian, second copy of Jacobian. That's why I use here d phi prime, d phi prime. And xi is another class which lives on these projective spaces and on Jacobian, actually simultaneously. And this term appears only when we have non-optimally uh, um, non filled states, when we have non-localized quasi poles. This P is non-zero if there are non-localized quasi poles. So it's kind of bad, it's a bad term, right? It will lead to uh, all non-topological properties. And the Herzebruch-Riemann-Roch formula gives the dimensional space of sections. And it's actually, it's an alternating sum of uh, all high uh, dimensions of all high cohomology groups. But luckily in our case, the, all the high cohomology groups vanish by something called Kadaira vanishing theorem, since this uh, S is a positive line bound. 
And this integral actually computes the rank, the, the degeneracy. Question, uh, yeah. is this vanishing uh, a specific property of quantum whole states? Uh, is it applicable to anything beyond uh, that? It's uh, specific. So far, we only did Laughlin, first of all. Uh, it, 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 it kind of, this often happens if this bundle uh, is, uh, is positive. And I think it should, I would, I would hope for a miracle that it works for other quantum states as well, although I cannot guarantee. But this miracle happened and this integral actually computes the degeneracy only as zero. And so it's an integral over this uh, symmetric, X is the symmetric product. This is a bunch of differential forms. Todd X is Todd class, it's known from the literature. So you plug it in and you compute differential forms. Can non trivial computation with the kind of uh, algebraic geometers uh, developed, uh, wor worked uh, quite often with this, these types of integrals. Uh, and there are all the sorts of tricks uh, to do this. Uh, so, but it's not this in, enormous n fold integral, we don't have to compute. And then to uh, add the solenoid phases, we actually need to consider this bundle over the product space of symmetric products times this parameter space, this Jacobian, this solenoid parameter space. So for each particle, we know how uh, solenoid phases couple to electromagnetic potential. You simply need to add this term to your uh, electromagnetic connection for each particle, where alpha and beta are harmonic one forms on Riemann surface. Phi A, Phi A plus G are solenoid phases. And along this M, we take the trivial connection. We simply like this, like in Laughlin's Duncan experiment. And then when you compute curvature, kind of, uh, the curvature between these components will lead to the already what we had before. And this part of the connection will actually compute non trivially with this part. Uh, and I should have denoted uh, this by, uh, ah, no, no, that's fine, that's fine. So this will commute, uh, will this uh, uh, give a non trivial commutator, these two things? And this will leave uh, to correction in this first chance class, for this step, for this work. And now we use a uh, Riemann, Gratinic Riemann rock, which gives uh, all the churn characters of the Laughlin bundle. So we have to integrate over fibers this symmetric spaces X. And what's left here will be the sum over differential forms on M, the Jacobian, differential forms of all degrees from zero to two G. So we integrate over the, uh, the symmetric product and what's left is differential form on M. And this analogous cal calculation gives the formula which I announced. Uh, now, what's the, coming back to G's uh, question, and this is my almost last slide. What's the physics interpretation of first in class? So this is best explained in the papers of Avram uh, zeller zograf in the 90s, in the integer case. Uh, so, so we change the flux linearly with time Flux phi B, for example, right? So the cycle B of the surface, adiabatic. So we create current I A through the cycle A for the another cycle. And whole conductance is the matrix which is proportionality coefficient right? between I A, how V B, potential V B influences current in the cycle A. Right? So this is sort of whole conductance is this ma matrix uh, uh, which enters uh, this uh, uh, one one four two form, and it's actually defined in the fractional quantum Hall effect as first chain class divided by the rank. That's why it can it does not have to be integer, because we divide by the rank. This is kind of integer. This will lead to integer. Uh, uh, conductances. And div division by rank leads to this one over Q field infraction. 
Now, what happens is, uh, so we have a completely filled state, we're on the plateau, and then we increase B, and then all of a sudden we could add more electrons into our system, but we don't dope anymore, right? We have the number of electrons stays the same. So they, they appear, and then, then uh, quasi hole starts to appear. So, so along the plateau, you can pin quasi holes to the impurities, but then you run out of impurities and these quasi holes become non-localized. So this is where problems begin. So you have, you start to uh, have P uh, quasi holes, which are non-localized because there are no uh, more impurities. And then you uh, whole kind of, so you can use our formulas to see that in this case, asymptotically for big N, the whole conductance begins to deviate. If you have pin on localized quasi holes, you, you, you start to receive correction. So you, you, you leave the plateau and you are over here now. Now your whole conductance no longer contest. So this is actually, we were surprised to see that this is actually a formula from the books of quantum pole effect, yeah. except that in the books, it's genus one. So you can see exactly this formula, how it, uh, how whole conducts deviates uh, when there are pin on localized quasi holes, except that planar case, you have to put a genus one because planar plane is like two. Right? Uh, and we can generalize this formula to any genus. And then, you know, as P grows, then you really leave the plateau. So I think that's, that confirms this physics picture from the textbooks, at least as far as Laughlin states are concerned. I mean, it, it perfectly uh, kind of validates this picture that we have in our head that, about impurities and quasi -false. Okay, so this is our paper. Oh, now it has volume and page number. Uh, and we're writing down more detailed kind of calculation. Still takes time. And uh, just to finish with a few comments, I'm over time. So, uh, so we, we, uh, uh, we did this uh, uh, fragility flat flatness test. But in order to prove really projective flatness of this bundle, we really need to find this projective flat connection, which whose curvature will be scalar matrix. So this remains to be done even for the solenoid phases. Uh, so first in class is the quantized whole conductance. What are the signatures of the second chain class? So if you know, please tell me after the talk. I don't know. If there, are, if there is an independent second chain class, which is not power the first one, what would be, what would be the experiment with, that would measure you? The thing in any kind of realistic situation. That's interesting. So, I, I, so far, I don't have a clear answer. So we have to obviously apply this uh, uh, test for other situations definitely for other quantum pole states, because for each plateau, you have, now you have a, a zoo of different quantum pole states, right? You can associate the candidates for each plateau, which some of them work better than others, right? So each, each state must be tested with this test, because I don't believe that all of them are topological in the sense, and they must be. Right? So this could be a kind of a tool to uh, for theoretical and you know, fractional quantum hole physics. Maybe you, you want parameter space to be brilliant also in some situations. But the pre prerequisites are always degenerate states and uh, the parameter space should be of complex dimension at least two. Well, maybe then you will, you can also go to uh, high dimensions uh, and define Laughlin states there. And it's these two interesting things, which I will not talk about. I just refer to the paper with uh, J. Wang and Michael Douglas. And I will finish here.
Thanks a lot. Yeah, uh, thank you a lot for the talk. Um, yeah, we have many questions for, for the in-person in audience. So do you have uh, comments and questions from the remote uh, attendees? Okay, so if, if not, uh, let's thank Samuel again. Uh, let, let me ask one question. Okay. Uh, I, I was wondering if you tried to, to use this, uh, uh, for example, and then uh, just apply to this to states and spin systems, such as, for example, you know, states arising in Kitaev model or maybe Toric code. So, yes. uh, is there any? I mean, uh, uh, it, it sounded like uh, uh, the vanishing of the of these higher terms was so, some sort of magic associated with Laughlin states, but. Uh, I don't know. Have you have you just tried to do this? You, I uh, that's uh, yeah. That's in the, in the Tory code. You have the generic, and you can also insert flexes. Yeah, that's a good idea. That it should be done there. I just didn't so far. I didn't uh, have. Uh, so the vanishes theorem uh, also only works for complex line bundles. Uh, Say it again. Do, do, do you require the complexity? Ah, yeah, because we are in mechanics, so wave functions are complex numbers. Yeah, the complex manifold, complex line bundle. The vanishing theorem only works for that, or more general? Ah, the vanishing theorems work if you have a, a line bundle which has this property of positivity. So it doesn't it's require. Quite usual. Which doesn't is quite require to be complex. Okay. No, it's uh, also in complex. It's uh, for holomorphic line bundle. Holomorphic. It's for holomorphic line bundle. Uh, there are many examples where they have this property of positivity and this vanishing property will. Uh, I mean, it's it's not unusual that it will work in many cases. Let's put it this way. Do you have comments for uh, how can your result apply to the meromorphic line bundles? Well, um, meromorphic, if you want meromorphic sections with meromorphic sections, I, I have the problem that they will not be kind of, I don't know if they're good wave functions because you, you, in quantum mechanics, you want your wave functions to be ultra normalizable. And meromorphic functions are not really uh, too normalizable. And you maybe you want to cut some hole around the zeros of this wave function. But it becomes, in terms of L2, it's not clear if there is a, like L2 structure will work because uh -huh. to, to define normalization, you need to uh, get rid of holes. Okay. So with meromorphic, I only, I only work with holomorphic okay. for this reason. Okay, yeah, thank you very Maybe much. It's, uh, it's, uh, it can be explained. But, you know. Yeah. <laughs> okay, thanks a lot. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, uh, see you next week. Thanks a lot. Okay, see you.